Well, like a moth to a bright porch light, my next guest was attracted to harness racing by the bright lights of Club Menangle. To tell his story, Scott Wade. Well, Scott, good to catch up with you. Before we have a chat about your career in both the galloping and harness racing industries, how long have you been with the Fireys? Uh, since 1985, so 37 years, I think. So, nearly virtually from school? Yeah, not long after, yeah. I turned 20 when I was down at the training college. Always a desire to be a fiery? It was, yeah. It was a life's dream, I suppose, yeah. You've turned up at Miracle Mile night, uh, but not the way you would have liked to. <laughs> no, we did turn out to an automatic fire alarm here on Miracle Mile night one night, uh, just about the time, up to the uh, restaurant up there, I think it was. <laughs> so you must be, you must be much, uh, based locally then? I am at Rose Meadow, which is uh, not far, far down the road down here, so yeah, nice and close. Well, first of all, thanks for your service with the uh, Fire Brigade, Scott. Now let's have a chat about your career. Uh, how did you get involved in the gallops then? I uh, started off breaking in and then started training from there, had a few horses and just got more and more and just built from there. So it was one of those things that started at a small hobby and got bigger. Do you find the training of horses got a relief from such a pressure job? Very much so. A lot of stress, a lot of pressure on there with that, a lot of things that go on there and um, it definitely is an outlet. It gives me a good chance to think about something else and uh, it's always good thinking about the next horse that might be up to race and might go all right. You had a pretty good career as far as the galloping industry is concerned, spanned over 20 years, over 150 winners. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed it. We did a lot of miles, a lot of travelling and uh, that was sort of what wore me down a little bit with it in the end, but it's a great industry and some great people in it. Any horse in particular, Scott, near and dear to the heart? Uh, Brenna was probably the favourite. She won 11 for me. We got her as a broken down mare. She was fairly cantankerous with a bad attitude and had uh, had one trial before we got her where she broke the jockey's collarbone and uh, uh, thing. And in the end, she was probably one of the horses that all the jockeys loved to ride. She was such a true professional and, and tried her guts out right to the very end. What about influences in your galloping career? Uh, probably Gary Boxer Williams. He was uh, helped out a lot there with the thing and uh, was very influential on me. Um, I suppose other ones down there, Gwenda Markle, a few of them from down at um, Kembler and that always helped out and always uh, used a lot of Gwenda's young apprentices there and they'd write a bit of track work for me and helped me out when we needed to. So she was always great, a great supporter, Gwenda, and she had Gary working for her as well. Yeah, Scott, you suffered a very severe injury, both uh, as far as severe to your face and uh, head, and to this day you s still don't know what happened. No, I was hooking a horse up onto the back of the jogger, and next minute I woke up on the ground, blood everywhere, and a hole in the middle of my face. So, yeah, so it was sort of one of those things. I've no memory at all, whatsoever at all. So, as I mentioned, the bright lights of Club Angle caught your eye one day coming home after travelling, as you mentioned, numerous hours on the road with your son Jack, and you decided, I'm going to give that a go. That's right. Yeah, we're coming here, and we'd come back, and we could see the lights as we get close to home. There, only. 10 minutes down the road and I thought we've travelled all this way and Jack was at that stage doing a little bit of uh, swab work for the, here and he loved the trots and it was a good opportunity to get in, involved with him and I think that's uh, sharing with the horses is probably as big a thing as training them, to sharing the with your family and your friends so that was what, what brought me to harness racing. Unfortunately Jack's no stranger to suffering a severe injury, in fact four breaks in his back and also two in his neck. Yeah, well, that was when he was riding track work for me. Um, def unfortunately, come off a horse that was actually named after him and hurt his back and was in a very bad way for a while there. But luckily now he's doing well and uh, hopefully, you know, stays the same. He's recovered well. And how many horses do you have under your care? I've only got five in work at the moment, so cutting down a fair bit. I'm starting to sort of wind down at the end there and just have a few there for the enjoyment now. And what about the driving aspect? Uh, look, the driving in the uh, cap and plate was very, very um, enjoyable. It was one of the greatest moments, thrills of my life there to drive with my son in that and represent the Indigenous community and what we're doing. And uh, it's just such a fantastic effort from the club to what they do. It's truly great. What a success that race has become and very important to the Indigenous people who want to get their name on that plate. And you're no stranger to that. You want your name on there. It would be fantastic, yes. Yes, it would. Um, and myself or Jack, and he's been here in a few finals. I had, I got made it to one final, but uh, he's had a few goes at it, and it'll happen one day, I suppose. 
Jack's now based at Cowra. He is, yes. He's out there and uh, he's working for the council out there now, so he's got a good job and a good future out there, so that's that's great. In your hardest racing career, who's been able to guide you along the way there as far as being an influence? Uh, I suppose, look, you know, Glenn McElhaney was there from the start and he's always been there for a, a chat and a yarn. He's always got everyone's best interest at heart, so he's been very helpful. Life with the fire is starting to wind down a little bit. Yes, getting very close to retirement, and uh, yeah, my wife will get a few more hours with me now, so that'll be something that she's looking forward to. Does that mean an extra horse or two in the stable? <laughs> no, it might mean a little bit more travel, I'd say, with her. So get around, maybe travel around Australia or something like that in the future. Well, Scott, it's been great to catch up with you. Once again, thank you for your service with the uh, Fireys and continued success, hopefully, in the harness racing, and just thankful that those bright lights of Clubman Angle caught your attention. No problem. Thank you very much.